No, my friend, this is not a mistake. This is not the exact same Kia Sportage I drove a short while back. No, this is in fact a plug-in hybrid version of said compact Kia SUV. And uh, let me tell you straight up, this is a complete bust, essentially a near waste of time because this week the ambient temperatures have been ridiculously low and as of tomorrow, they're going down even more. Ergo, meaning that I am not benefiting from the advantages you would normally get from a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Now, over the last few years, I have come to accept, no, um, warm up to the idea that a plug-in hybrid vehicle does have its, does have some merits. And uh, for the first three days, of being in possession of this 2023 Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. I did plug it in, but, and I'll elaborate slightly on this a little bit later. Um, fact of the matter is that I can essentially not get the petrol engine to shut off to benefit from this car's battery in order to get only electric mobility because it's a plug-in hybrid. And, um, well, it's extremely disappointing and it kind of takes me back to the original reasons why I believe that plug-in hybrids are flawed in many ways. Um, so in the following video, which should be briefer than usual, um, we're going to do a really fast walk around of this uh, Sportage and then uh, we're going to take it for a drive and I'll Give you a slight rundown on the differences between the hybrid which there is a hybrid version of this as well as the plug-in hybrid and uh, why maybe maybe in this case a plug-in hybrid isn't entirely worth the investment so here we go all right so we can start right away just with styling i mean the plug-in hybrid still has the catfish angry catfish face that I find a little bit absurd, um, but still the remainder of the compact SUV is still fairly attractive. Uh, if we just jump right into pricing in the US, uh, the base hybrid model is $27,490. The top trim plug-in hybrid is $43,190 in Canada. And the base EX hybrid is $36,490. And the top trim plug-in hybrid, the SX, is $48,995. So with the base hybrid, I mean, you still get a 12.3-inch touchscreen, synthetic leather, 17-inch wheels, and so on and so forth. Now, when you get into the first layer of plug-in hybrids, the EX Premium, which is what this model happens to be, which is kind of cool, um, you're looking at $45,595. And with that, well, you get a sunroof, 19-inch wheels, Remote start, cooled seats, uh, the same touchscreen, the uh, digital uh, instrument panel. I mean, they're, that's it. I mean, just by looking at it, you'll never be able to tell that it's an actual plug-in hybrid uh, unless you focus on, say, the badge or the charge port, which is in a good place in the back and not in the front. Uh, so that's that. So you know what? Uh, the good thing about plug-in hybrid for the Sportage is that there's no loss in the trunk, so there's no sense in opening that up. Uh, just a quick reminder that uh, this is still a fairly spacious compact SUV. There's a lot of leg room, plenty of space for uh, the two baby seats or even three adults if you had to. And the uh, same kind of goes for the interior. The fit finish is still quite nice. The presentation is lovely. There's that slightly curved... Uh, IP and a touchscreen display, comfortable seats. There isn't anything unusual going on here. Oops, <laughs> it looks like I hit the horn. That's funny. We'll put that in the video because it's funny. Okay, so there's your digital IP. Uh, just uh, where do we go? Okay, the radio's not on. So, uh, yeah, I guess I want to show you that. Do you see? Yeah, you're seeing that, eh? So, there's that's what I'm kind of saying. Uh, it's been very, very cold. And uh, the uh, things are not going entirely well. As you can see, I think, yes, 
the battery is about, I don't know, 85% charged or somewhere along those lines at the moment. And yes, the petrol engine just went on. Because I've had to use the heating all week, it's been so cold. And that's being, and see this is the warmest temperature it's been. So it's minus three Celsius, which works out to, I don't know, 28 or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's about to drop to, I believe zero degrees Fahrenheit in the next few days. So that's the, the 13.7, where is the 13.7? It's about to get worse. Um, drive modes here, same thing, nothing spectacular here. And as you can see, eco popped up because I've been driving in eco mode exclusively. Um, you have the EV, electric and hybrid drive modes too. That's depending on the battery state and other conditions. Otherwise, everything else is very straightforward. Kia Sportage, so great buttons. Uh, this layout is still a little bit of a bugger because if you want to change menus, you got to be careful what you select there. This is normal, great. Visibility is good as always, and uh, I think that's it. So it's time for the drive part. Okay, so the bones between the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid are identical, meaning that both are powered by a turbocharged 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine, which on its own produces 177 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. Both have electric motors, obviously, mixed in, which makes them hybrids. Um, the difference with these electric motors is that they generate slightly different amounts of power. Now, in the case of the hybrid, you're looking at 59 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. For a total combined output of 228 HP and two, 227 HP and 258 pound-feet of torque. That's my tripod, as always. <laughs> when you step up to the plug-in hybrid, what happens is that you go from a small battery and it grows to a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery unit which feeds the electric motor more power for a total of 90 horsepower and 224 pound feet of torque for an overall system output of 261 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque so what does that all mean that means that the plug-in hybrid as always needs a little bit more power and gets a little bit more power for a number of reasons, uh, one being to compensate for the excess weight it must carry around because of the much, much larger battery. In this case, 500 pounds more. So here's the kicker, okay? Ride quality is good, steering is fine, brakes are nice, uh, all-wheel drive system with all the snow we had earlier this week. I mean, you know, it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Except the one thing, the one main reason why you would buy this, which is be fuel efficient. Okay. So when I reviewed the, well, regular Sportage, my return fuel consumption average was a not so great 12.5 liters per hundred kilometers because of, well, you know, about 70% city driving and it was very cold as well. Not quite as cold as it has been and will be, but still. Now, if you step up to the hybrid, which is, you know, about $36,000, um, Kia says that you'll average about 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, stepping up, so spending another $9,000 for the larger plug-in hybrid battery, which should give you about 35 kilometers of EV range, give or take, even if they say it's more, that's, that's, that's probably the best you can hope for. Um, the, the hybrid aspect of the plug-in hybrid will consume, and this is according to Kia, not me, 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers, 6.7. So that's a half liter per 100 kilometers more. So this gives you kind of an idea of where I'm going because, okay, so the official fuel consumption rating of this thing is 2.8 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers. What that means is that this thing will consume in many cases, many instances, more fuel than the hybrid version as it is now because i'm convinced that 13.7 we can chop 20 percent off of that okay 
just because I'm a nice guy. That's still only about a liter per hundred kilometers an hour, a hundred kilometers less than what I average with the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder engine model with the eight speed automatic transmission. The reason why this is, and I'm repeating myself, but it's the cold because every morning I've had the defrost on, the heater on, the heated steering wheel, the heated seats on. I have no choice because it's so freaking cold and I'm taking the kids to school and daycare. And out of all my driving, only, I've, I think I've managed maybe two or three kilometers in full EV mode. Most of the time, and it just did it right now, which I guess is diffi difficult to shoot, one man show. Um, the petrol engine is on recharging the battery despite the fact that it's at about 80, 75, 80%, um, but it's not feeding the actual wheels. The electric motor is feeding the wheels, putting the power to the ground. So even though that's an efficient way of it running, it's still running, which explains in large part why my fuel consumption average is so abysmal. It needs to run all the time because of the driving and weather conditions. Now I'm not making up these driving conditions. You're seeing the numbers and you can check everything online. In this case, an in many, I don't want to say most anymore, but in many cases where there's a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid version available of the same vehicle, you're better off, depending on the gap. Like in this case, like base for base, it's about nine grand. Even if you do get up to $5,000 back or maybe even more, you're still gonna consume more fuel in these driving conditions. And it's just, it doesn't make sense. But it can if you plug it in every day, which I did for three days and it changed absolutely nothing. And that's the bottom line. If I was a betting man, I would go with the hybrid, save a few bucks and save at the pumps. And that's it. 